Good morning and welcome to Christchurch Chislehurst. It's Sunday the 21st of June 10.30 and it's great that so many of you are joining us for worship this morning. A particular welcome if you're with us for the first time today. So just one or two notices. Firstly a reminder that we now have prayer meeting on Monday morning. That's a Zoom prayer meeting at 9.30. You'd be very welcome to join us for that. Please email me for further details. We're also now going to be able to open up the church for private solitary prayer uh, using good social distancing practice on a Monday and a Thursday afternoon between 3 and 4 p.m. So that will start tomorrow. Last week we were able to introduce you to our new ministry team leader to look after the work with families, children and young people and we're hoping that Lydia will be able to start working with us uh, over the summer uh, but as September at the very latest and uh, we invite you to invest in this great new exciting opportunity to engage with our families, our children and our young people. The food bank is in great need at the moment of uh, supplies and it's very busy so we'd urge you to help uh, stock, up, stock up on the food bank. You can um, make donations by bringing them here to 62 Lubbock Road or to John's house which is 1A Holbrook Lane, Chislehurst or to Paul Williamson's house which is 14 Aspen Close in Bromley. And if today is your birthday or you've got a birthday this week or an anniversary, we'd like to wish you a very happy birthday or happy anniversary. I hope you have a wonderful day today. So let's pray as we begin our time of worship together. Heavenly Father, we continue to face the many challenges of the situation that we're in caused by coronavirus. And we pray, Lord, for all those who are continuing to suffer in different ways. We pray that they would know your peace and your love this morning. We ask your spirit to guide and lead us as we worship today, as we hear your word, as we sing together, as we pray together. Lord, bless us and bring us together, even though we're physically apart. Bring us together by your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today in our Bible passage and in our worship, we're going to be thinking about the different characters of our awesome God. In our first song, we're going to be thinking about the wondrous, awesome God who knows us, who's numbered every grain of sand and who knows every hair on our head. And in the second one, at the end of the service today, we're going to be responding by following God and by following Jesus. So our first song today, Behold Our God. Yeah. 
it's a rather wet and damp Thursday morning and I'm down outside our beautiful church building. Now, with the weather set to be a scorcher next week, if you can answer yes to the following questions then I might just have something for you. Firstly, are you fed up with the same daily walks, the same outdoor spaces to explore, the same woods, the same parks, the same routes around the town? Are you also missing this place and would like to reconnect a little more? But also, would you like another opportunity to explore God's word and get closer to God? Well, if you answered yes to any of those, then I have something for you. Because hidden around our beautiful grounds are six stones. Each one is painted with a different image and also a Bible reference. All you need to do is find them. When you do, why not pause and take a moment to reflect on those passages of scripture and allow God to speak to you. If you haven't brought your Bibles or you don't know all those passages and verses, you can pick up a sheet from the porch and when you find a stone, you can read the verses aloud to yourself or just sit yourself somewhere in the sunshine on your deck chair or on your picnic rug if you like. You never know, you might bump into some more friendly faces here too. Now, there are no stones hidden near the preschool entrance or their playground. They are back during the week, so please kindly just respect that if you visit the grounds. Also, if you collect a sheet with Bible verses on from the porch area, please don't put it back. Once you've handled it, take it away. Same with the stones. Please just don't touch or move them for the obvious reasons. Hopefully everyone can enjoy them. This should be something if you're a toddler up to a hobbler, hopefully you can enjoy and come and enjoy our church grounds again. Bye for now. Hi Doug, boy am I glad to be out in the park, away from, from home for a bit. Why is that? Well, we're all at home together, mum and dad trying to work, and me and my sister trying to do the schoolwork. Or play computer games. Well, a bit of both, you know. And you're all getting on each other's nerves? Uh, yes, not all of the time, but this morning my sister had used all the hot water, mum had just come in from a cycle ride, Dad was waiting for the shower, I hadn't tidied up after breakfast and everyone was arguing and my mum said, when am I going to get some peace around here? So what happened next? I don't know, because I sneaked out the back door to go to the park to see you. Oh well, things can't always be peaceful. No, and you should see all the arguing going on about the stuff on the telly. I've seen it. And on Twitter. You shouldn't be seeing that. No, but my dad keeps groaning when he looks at his phone and reading it out. It sounds like everywhere needs some peace. Yes, but how's that going to happen? I think it begins on the inside. What do you mean? Well, in the Bible, Jesus said, My peace I leave with you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. What did he mean? Well, I think Jesus meant we can have peace on the inside, even when the world seems full of arguing and noise. Really? I'd like that, but how? Lots of ways, like if we're really angry with someone, we decide we're going to try and forgive them, maybe. Yes, and? Well, we pray and ask God to help us not to be afraid. And? We just try to remember how much God loves us, even when the world is in a bit of a mess. OK, how do I do all that? Well, I think sometimes we just need to be a bit quiet and stop doing lots of other things to know God's peace. I could stay in the park and do that. Well, why not? Then you could go home and show peace to your family. Really? How? Maybe offer to tidy up and then ask your mum and dad what you can do to help. Mm, that sounds like a good idea. Do you know why I came to the park? No, why? Because I used up all the hot water at home and dad was really cross. I'm not surprised. If you had to wash all of that hair, you better go home and say sorry then. Yes, and maybe that is what Jesus meant by being peacemakers. Hi everyone, we've been enjoying worship for everyone on YouTube with Nick and Becky Drake and we thought we'd share with you one of their songs that we are enjoying as a family. What's it called, Eric? City on a Hill. City on a Hill. Here we go.
Good morning, everybody. In our prayer time today, I'm going to be showing some images which will help us to focus on our prayers and give us a bit of space to pray in our own words. So let's start today by fixing our eyes on Jesus and thanking him for who he is. Using the words on this image, pick out a couple of the names and attributes of Jesus that you particularly want to thank him for today. Jesus is the mighty God. He is the Prince of Peace. Jesus, you are Emmanuel, God with us right now, today. Jesus, you are name above all names. Jesus, we thank you for who you are. Amen. Have a look at this map of the world and pick out a country that's on your mind or maybe you've heard about in the news. Perhaps there's unrest and injustice there or desperate poverty and hunger, or corrupt governments and suffering people. Let's bring our prayers to God for that country right now. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray now for our government, for all who are steering us through this difficult time. Please give them strength and wisdom, Lord. Guide them in their decision making. May they always put love first. Please speak to them and inspire them as they make difficult decisions. And when they hear shouting voices coming from all directions, may they hear your voice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's name before God anyone we know who works in the health service with people who are ill. Gracious God, please give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those who are searching for a cure. Please strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And carrying on from that, we remember now any of our friends or family who are ill. Maybe we haven't been able to see them. Let's name those people before the Lord now. And let's pray too for those who are anxious and fearful, for those who are lonely, those who are vulnerable, and those who live with anger in their lives. Lord, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain or suffering in any kind of way, knowing that whenever danger or fear threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort them and heal them. Give them your peace and restore them to health and strength. Amen. And let's finish by focusing on Jesus again, who has heard our prayers as we ask them all in his name. Amen. Today's reading is from Matthew 10, verses 24 to 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor the servant above his master. 
It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, nor hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will, the mem will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up my, my cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Good morning. And I really hope that you've had a good week. Another week of easing of lockdown. Maybe you've been able to see people a little bit more. Maybe you've even tried to brave the high street shopping. Some children have been returning to school and yet there's been so much, hasn't there, in our news about injustice, about the economy, about jobs being lost and children not being back at school or getting education. So many things to think about. And you might be taking time to reflect on our world, what's going on? What is God saying to us at this time? And maybe in those quiet moments, you may have been aware of things around you and maybe the bird song in the early morning, maybe during the day, maybe in the early evening, maybe seeing lots of different birds around and the wildlife around and actually maybe taking time to enjoy those moments. Now, a little quiz for you. I wonder if you can think, as we're talking about birds, of a bird that is small, and it's brown, and you will see them everywhere, singing, chirping, looking for food, and we get very used to them. Hopefully you thought it's a sparrow. A passage today, Jesus talks about the sparrow. And the sparrow is mentioned many, many times in the Bible. And in this passage is painted as something that isn't worth very much. That God knows about the sparrows. And it talks about how much he cares deeply about each one of us. So this passage is in uh, Matthew chapter 10. And last week we heard about how Jesus had called the 12 disciples and how Jesus was preparing his newly appointed disciples for ministry. And he said, yes, I'm calling you to do my work. And maybe they felt quite shocked and a disbelief that Jesus was calling them to do this special job. They might have felt pr proud uh, and just to think, wow, I've been chosen. And this guy who's going to do some amazing things, I'm going to go and follow him. Why has he chosen me? And the disciples must have felt a raft of feelings and emotions as they were embarking on one of the most life-changing decisions of their lives. And in this chapter, 
Jesus then warns them that they're going to suffer persecution, that the authorities around them would be after them, as many in the local synagogues would not like their message. He was saying their mess, the, the mission was going to be dangerous all for his sake that they were going to suffer physical and emotional violence. I wonder how they might have felt then. I wonder if they thought, actually, I'm not going to bother. But they stayed with Jesus. And I wonder if they were going to have the strength to bear the burdens, maybe stamina to go the distance, or even the nerve to face the opposition that Jesus said was coming. And they might have thought, I'm changing my mind. I'm off. But in the same passage, Jesus continues to offer encouragement for the task ahead. With a blend of challenge and comfort in verse 24 begins with Jesus saying, a student is not above his the, his teacher, our student above their master. And he's basically saying, if I've been persecuted, then so would they. And it's not saying it's all going to be okay, but that a time would come when everything would be uncovered, secrets would be made known, but the light of the kingdom would be seen and justice would prevail. But in the same passage, he carries on, he says, do not be afraid of them. Speak it out, be truthful, be authentic. Because the message of the kingdom is not to be kept a secret. It's good news. Share it without being fearful. And he continues to offer them words of reassurance. He says that two sparrows, not, not two sparrows sold for a penny. Yet not one of them will fall without him knowing. What an amazing promise, what an amazing analogy that Jesus is giving because he's saying that God knows about all of the sparrows and as well as all of the hairs on their head were numbered. Now, that's an amazing promise for us in the here and now. The hairs of your head are all numbered. That almost seems impossible. But Jesus was saying, I care for you that much. He cares for you more deeply than the sparrow. And he's saying if they're not outside of God's attention, then surely you are worth more. He values each of us so much. Even in times of hardship, personal threats, difficulties, God knows. God knows what we're going through right now. God knows what your situation is. God knows everything. And it's natural to feel that fear when things are tough, quite natural. But we might feel God is not near. But nothing can take us out of his love. And as we choose to follow Jesus, we can take that step. And we can trust him with our lives, our souls, everything. And how often do we try to take that back? I know I do. I can do it my way, but God's kingdom is worth telling because God's love can be trusted. And the disciples would need to prepare for opposition, but Jesus told them to go in confidence because God was in control. And he said that we read it so much in the Bible, wherever the gospel is proclaimed, there will be opposition, but there is nothing to fear. God cares about the details in our lives and even as we face temptation, opposition, danger, we can believe in what Jesus says, do not fear. Jesus knew that his disciples would let him down. Peter denied him, Judas betrayed him and many of the others just ran away, it was too frightening. And then Jesus carries on in verse 35, he said that following by following him, families would be turned against each other. And anyone who loves their family more than him is not worthy of him. Goodness, what was he saying? 
When we were in Tanzania, we met many who had left their family for the sake of the gospel and often turning from Islam to follow Jesus. And this would have presented them with many, many challenges, persecution and often immense suffering. It was humbling to see the commitment that many gave to follow Jesus. And one Sunday when we were in the cathedral, Bishop Given had two men, two young men who decided to follow Jesus. They'd been thrown out of their house. They were disconnected from their family. They had nothing. And yet they were wanting to follow Jesus. And we know that in many, in many countries, this is a sacrifice that people must make. And Christian commitment may separate friends and loved ones, not because Jesus was encouraging disobedience and conflict, but more that our values, our morals, our goals and purposes may change. That could set people apart from their family. But Jesus came to establish a new way of being God's people, something new. And in the current times over the last two weeks, we have witnessed immense conflict with many people facing persecution, injustice, acute pain because of the colour of their skin. Many people in our world, in our country, in our community are not treated fairly because they don't fit the norm. And it might be that we are called to stand up for injustice, to speak out for truth, and our message may not be welcome. However, standing up for what we believe will take courage. You may have seen the film called Hacksaw Ridge, which we have seen recently. And this is a true story and it's set in the Second World War. And it depicts the story of a Seventh Day Adventist who decides to join up but refuses to bear arms because of his faith. His father didn't want him to go because of the trauma that he had suffered in the First World War. The senior officers wanted to get rid of him or wanted him court-martialed, but the son was adamant that he wanted to serve as a medic. He stood up against ridicule, against adversity and persecution, and the film ends with him saving many lives. He stood up for what he believed in and was able to save many lives from being killed. God cares for you. He is the one that we can trust with our whole life. Nothing is too small for him to care about. Maybe Jesus is calling you today to, to maybe follow him or maybe just take that step and say, I'm going to follow Jesus. Maybe Jesus is calling you to do something new, something risky. Come on the journey, take that risk. Take a challenge. Christy Wimber said, calling isn't something that we can do on our own. Sometimes the nerve to step up and be pushed out of our comfort zones, comfort comes by others who remind us of who we are and what we're meant to be. And to conclude, Jesus did not say you will never have a rough passage. You will never be overstrained. You will never feel uncomfortable, but he did say you will never be overcome. Amen.
So thank you again for joining us this morning for worship. It's been wonderful to have you with us and we hope to see you again very soon. So let's pray and we, as we finish our service together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be joined together in your love. We thank you for all that you teach us. We thank you most of all, Lord, that you care for us more than we can imagine, as, particularly as we go through these challenging times. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.